Okay, so today we will be looking at uh, chapter six, which is about uh, linear model uh, selection and recognition. So last week, it's just like a follow up uh, to our discussion in which uh, we have uh, last week. So today we'll be looking at the exercise uh, of chapter six. So there are some couple of questions. So I'll be using uh, I'll be using the notes, uh, the exercise solution, which uh, Connor uh, posted in the slide. So like uh, the first question, which uh, they were talking about uh, in the chapter, it said we perform this uh, subset, forward stepwise, and also backward stepwise selection on a single data set for each approach. We obtain P plus one uh, model containing uh, zero predictors, one predictors, two predictors, and being about what predictors. They were asking that we should explain our answers. Then we, they also asked another question here, which is about which of the three model with scale predictors has the smallest training residual uh, residual sum of square. Uh, so looking at this, uh, they talk about uh, that best uh, subsets consider the most model that is all possible combination of P predictors are what considered in best subset. Therefore, this will give the smallest training residual sum of square. It will at least consider all possible co possibilities covered by the forward and backward stepwise selection. However, all three approaches are expected to give similar if not identical results are uh, in practice. So they say both the subset selection, both the forward and also the backward uh, uh, selection method for the linear model, they are going to give, uh, if not identical, similar uh, results uh, in that context. They now ask here that which of the three models with scale predictors has the smallest test uh, residual sum of square. So uh, in the response, we say we cannot tell which model will perform best on the test uh, residual sum of square because the, the answer will depend on the trade-off between fitting to the data and over overfitting, fitting to the data and model overfitting. Okay, so they also ask another question like the C question, which is like either we are going to choose one or two options of either true or false. They say the predictors in the k variable model identified by forward stepwise are a subset of the predictors in the k plus one variable model identified by the forward uh, stepwise uh, selection. So here we see that forward stepwise selection retains all futures identified in previous models as k is increased because forward is going to retain all futures in the future uh, previous model as the number of k in the model is increased. So we also see that the predictors in the k variable model identified by backward stepwise are a subset of the predictors in the k plus one variable model identified by backward stepwise uh, selection, by backward stepwise selection. So here yeah, the result uh, come out to be false because forward and backward stepwise selection can identify different combinations of variables due to different algorithms in which they are using. So they, they also ask the, the fourth question that the predictors in the K variable model identified by forward stepwise are a subset of the predictors in the K plus one variable model identified by backward stepwise as selection. Here also, the answer is false because forward and backward stepwise selection can identify different combination of variable due to uh, different different algorithms. So the fifth question still on that question one, they say the predictors in the K variable model identified by best subsets are a subset 
for the predators in the game plus one valuable model identified by best subset as selector. So here also, uh, the result is false because best subset selection can identify different combination of variables for each care by considering all possible all the possibly possible models. So question two, they were asking for part of A through C, which will indicate which of I through for IV is correct, justified. We should also try and justify the answer. So here we have the first question that the lasso relative to least square is what? The first option here say more flexible and hence will give improved prediction accuracy when its increase in bias is less than the decrease in variance. So the second option says more flexible and hence will give improved prediction accuracy when its increase in variance is less than its decrease in bias. The third question says uh, less flexible and hence will give improved prediction accuracy when increase in bias is less than its decrease in variance. The fourth option says less flexible and hence will give improved prediction accuracy when its increase in variance is less than its decrease in bias. So here we, here we see that the third option, where because we said by using shrinkage, lasso can reduce the number of predictors. So it's less flexible. As a result, it will lead to an increase in bias by approximating the true relationship. We hope that this increase is small, but that we, we dramatically reduce variance. That is the difference we will see in the model fit uh, between different sets of training data. So we also have the second part, which is B. We say we should repeat A for rich regression relative to least squares. So here we can see that the same is true of rich regression because shrinkage results in a less flexible model and can reduce uh, the variance. So for this, for this question C, we have to repeat A for nonlinear method relative to what the least relative to least square. So here we can see that nonlinear method can be more flexible. They can perform better as long as they don't substantially increase variance. Although we explore more of the nonlinear method uh, in chapter seven next week. So the the third question said that suppose we estimate the regression coefficient in a linear regression model by minimizing by minimizing for a particular value of s for part a through e we should indicate which of i through v is correct and also we should try and justify our answer so here we see that as we increase s from zero the training residual sum of square will do what the first question options here increase initially and then eventually start decreasing in an inverted u shape the second option says decrease initially and then eventually start increasing in a u shape the third option says steadily increase the fourth option says steadily decrease and the fifth option shall remain constant so here we see that as s increase the model becomes more flexible the model the sum of square sum of absolute coefficient can be higher with more flexible models. Training residual sum of square will always uh, will always decrease. So we have question B. They say we should try and repeat A, which is we should try and repeat this uh, for for variance for test residual sum of square. So here we see that with more flexible models, test residual sum of square will decrease as the fit improve and will then increase due to overfitting, which is due to what high variance. So we see the next question here, we see repeat A for variance. So we see that as S increase, 
the model becomes uh, more flexible. So variance, uh, the variance of the model will also uh, will also increase. So we also they also say we should try and repeat a for squared bias. Okay. So here we say that as s increase, the model becomes more flexible. So as bias will also what decrease. So we also repeat a for the irreducible error. So here we see that the irreducible error is unchanged in the model. Okay, so question four. Question four, they were asking that we suppose we estimate the regression coefficient in a linear regression model by minimizing for a particular value of lambda for part A through E, we should also indicate which of I through V is correct then we should try as much as possible to justify uh, our answer. So here we see that as, as we increase lambda, that is from zero, the training residual sum of square will what? The first option say increase initially and then eventually start uh, decreasing in an inverted U shape. So here they say it's gonna decrease initially and then eventually start increasing in a U shape. Here I say it's steadily increase, steadily decrease, here remain constant. So here we say that option three, okay? As lambda increase, more weight is placed on the sum of squared coefficient. And so the model becomes less flexible as a result of training residual sum of square must also what increase. So for B, let's say we should repeat A, okay? We should repeat A for test residual sum of square. So here we see as lambda increases, the flexibility decreases. So test residual sum of square uh, will also decrease, but will then increase as bias increases. So the next option say we, we should try and repeat A uh, for, for variance. So we see that uh, steadily, uh, decrease this steadily what decrease so we should repeat a again for square for squared bias so we can see that the option is steadily is going to be increased steadily we should repeat a for irreversible error so we say that irreducible irreducible error is still on the edge okay so question five they say it is well known that rich regression tends to give similar coefficient values to correlated values, variables, whereas the lasso may give quite different coefficient values to correlated variables. We will now explore this property in a very simple setting. Suppose that n is equal to two, b is the predictor is equal to two, x 11 is equals to x12, x21 is equals to x22. Uh, Furthermore, suppose that y1 plus y2 is equals to zero, x2 plus x21 is equals to zero, and x12 plus x22 is equals to zero, so that the estimate for the intercept in a link square rich regression or lasso model is zero. So the estimate for beta zero is equals to zero. A, question A. I say write out the rich regression optimization problem in this setting. So here they say that we, we are trying to minimize uh, minimize uh, uh, this so we, we can ignore beta zero and can expand the sum, sum since there is only two terms. Additionally, we can define x1 as equals to x11 equals to x12 at x2 is equals to x21 is equals to x22, we then need to minimize uh, minimize this term. So where we have f is equals to y1 minus beta1 x1 minus beta2 x2 all squared plus this, okay? So now they now say we should argue that in this setting, the rich coefficient satisfy estimates of beta1 is equals to estimates uh, of beta2. So here we, we can find when the above is minimized with respect to each of beta one and beta two 
by partial differentiation uh, given these equations. So here we can see that a minimum can be found when these are set to zero. So when the whole of this is set to zero, so we can get a minimum. We, therefore, lambda beta one is equal to lambda beta two, and beta one is equal to beta two. Thus, there is only one solution that is when the coefficients are when the coefficients are the same. So we write out the lasso optimization problem in this setting. Here we we are trying to minimize uh, minimize this as above and define x1 is equal to x2 is equal to x12 and x2 is equal to x21 is equal to x22. We simplify to simplify to our term this term. So the data say we should argue that in this setting, the lasso coefficient, which is beta one and beta two are not unique. Okay. In other words, there are many possi possible solutions to the optimization problem in C describing these uh, solutions. So we will consider the alternative form of the lasso optimization problem given by this uh, equation. Okay. Since x1 plus x2 is equal to zero and y1 plus y2 is equal to zero, this is equivalent to minimizing two into y1 into bracket estimates of beta one plus beta two times x1 all square, which has a solution when beta estimate of beta one plus estimate uh, of beta two is equal to y1 over x1. Geometrically, since this is a 45 degree backward sloping line in the estimate of beta one and beta two plane, the constraints of beta one plus beta two less than or equals to S specify a diamond shape in the same place. Also with lines that are that are 45 degrees centered at the origin and which intersect the axis at the distance S from the origin. Thus points along two edges of the diamond become solution to the lasso optimization problem. So here we look at uh, question six. We will now explore 6.12 uh, and 6.13 for that. So A, we say consider 6.12 with number of predictors is equals to one for some choice of Y1 and lambda is greater than zero. We should plot 6.12 as a function of beta one. Your plot should confirm that 6.12 is solved by 6.14, okay? So here we have equation 6.12, which is given as this and equation 6.14, uh, which is given at this. So here we have here we have estimate of beta j of r, uh, where r is for the rich, is rich regression estimates. So here we have lambda is 0 0.7. We have y as 1.4. We, then we create our function, which is a function taking on only the better value. So we define the function. So we create the plot using this. Then we put the best fit line using the uh, the AB line uh, function. So we can see these are the beta will goes from this value to this value. So we just uh, uh, got this. So now we said consider uh, six point thirteen when p is equals to one. We have just one predictors for some choices of y one and lambda is greater than zero. We should plot. 6.13 as a function of beta one. Then we said our plot should confirm that 6.13 is solved by 6.15. So this equation 6.13. Then we also have equation 6.15, which is given as this. So here we have lambda is 0 0.7 and y is 1.4. The top case applies. So here we can see that lambda is still this, y is this. So we define our plotting function. So then we now we now plot uh, by calling the function. So we now fit put pass put in the A B line. So we can see we still got uh, the same. We still get our equation, our plot back. So like uh, in question seven, it's about uh, Bayesian connection to lasso and which as discussed in six point two point two. 
a. It says suppose that y i is given as this, okay? Where e i is so e n are independent and identical distribution from from this. So distribution write out a likelihood of the data which is given as this. So this is, this is uh, giving us uh, this uh, equation. So B, let's say assume that the following prior for beta is beta one to what beta B are independent and identically distributed according to a double exponential distribution with mean of zero and common scale parameter of B. That is B is given as this, which is P, that is probability of being beta is equals to one all over two B exponential minus beta all over B. Write out a posterior for beta in this setting. So the posterior can be calculated by multiplying the prior and likelihood up to a proportional constant. So uh, this, uh, this is uh, this is the equations in which uh, they derived. Then they say we should argue that the lasso estimates is the mode for beta and is the posterior distribution. So you can see that let us find the maximum of the posterior distribution. Maximizing the posterior probability is equivalent to maximizing its log, which is which is given by this. Since uh, the first term is independent of beta, our solution will be when, minim when we minimize the second term, which is uh, this. So then I say that we should note that residual sum of square uh, is given as this, and the mod mode correspond to the lasso uh, of the optimization. So this equation I think is very, uh, I, I struggled a lot because it took me Because I am not coming from a uh, statistics uh, background. Okay, so now the, the, the fourth thing here we have now assume that the following prior for beta, beta one to beta p are independent and identical distributed according to a normal distribution with mean of zero and balance write out the posterior for beta in this setting. So the posterior for beta is just given uh, by this. This is the equation uh, for the posterior uh, for the beta. Then they say we should argue that the rich, we should argue that the rich uh, regression estimate is both the mode and also the mean for beta under this posterior distribution. So here we can see that to show that the rich estimate is, is the mode. We can again find the maximum and maximum maximizing the log of the posterior. The log is give, just given by log of p, which is beta all over x by y, alpha log of one all over square root of two times lambda epsilon. So, which is going to give us as the equation. So the nouns went further to say we can maximize the beta by ignoring the first term and also minimizing the second term, that is we minimize this, okay? So as above the RS, so now they will now move straight. Uh, they now went straight to the applied question where we where we where they make use of some libraries. So the, the, the ISLR2, the glam nets for the regression, so the leaves and also the PLS for partial least square. Uh, regression. So we just need to create some. Uh, we just need to create some random variables. So using the random function. So we say x. So which is a random, which is taken from normal distribution, hundred, e p, which is still hundred. So here we need to generate a response vector of y of length n is equals to one hundred according to the model. Okay, so we have beta zero, beta one, beta two, and beta three are constants of our choice. So here we have y, which is two plus three times x, 
minus two times x all squared plus 0 0.5 times x all cube plus EP. So which is the value of uh, y. So we now said, we now say we should use the rec subset function to perform best subset selection in order to choose the best model containing the predictors of which is x, x squared to x ten. What is the best model uh, obtained according to the Wallow CP, the Bayesian information criterion, and adjusted R squared? Show some plots to provide evidence for your answer and report the coefficients of the best model obtained. Note you will need to use the data on frame function to create a single data set containing both X and Y. So here we have, we use that data dot frame, we pass in our X, we pass in our Y. So this is, then we now have used the summary function. Within the summary function, we are using reg subset function. So where we have Y tilde poly X then, okay? So this polynomial function is gonna be up to order 10. Then we say raw equals true, then the data is that. So, so we have to use subset selection objects. So we call this so we can see poly. We can see this, okay? So these are the these are the results in which uh these are the results in which we got from from that uh, model, which is the subset. So we now repeat C using the forward stepwise selection and also using the backward stepwise selection. How does your answer compare? To the result in C. So here we just need to introduce method forward. So to get the forward subset selection, then we also introduce method is equals to backward to give us uh, the result uh, for the backward stepwise uh, selection. So we can see that uh, the two results are the the two approach the three approach they produce similar. Uh, we can see that they produce similar results. Okay, so I don't know whether there are any comments. No, I think we're yes. good. Okay. So now they now say that now fit a lasso model to the simulated data again using uh, x x squared to x10 as predictors. We should use cross validation to select the optimal value of lambda. Create a plot of cross validation error as a function of lambda. Report the resulting coefficient estimate and discuss the results obtained. So here we have res, we have CV dot climate. Okay, okay, we have poly, we have that, we are to obtain x, then we say 10 because we want to, it's gonna be from, from one to 10 predictors, just as, as they specify here. So we say raw to true, that is equals to y, then alpha is equals to one. So we have best, which will be rest, dollars and lambda dot minimum. So which is zero, uh, which is, uh, which is 0 0.09, okay? That is, then we now, we now use the plot function from base R passing the results. So we now see that mean squared, we just have the mean squared error and also the lambda. So we can see how here, uh, here this term, so we have smaller, lower mean squared error, but as we proceed, pro, proceed further on, uh, begin to, increase that is move from zero to around 60, which is the mean square error. So we also use uh, the GlamNet uh, function again, okay? We do the similar approach. So here we pass in lambda is equals to rest, dollars and lambda dot minimum. So we do prediction for the out, that is what coefficient S is equals to best. So these are all uh, the, these are the, these are the predicted value from the model. So now when fitting the lasso, the model that minimizes mean square error uses three predictors, okay? The coefficient estimates estimated are 
minus 1.9 and 0.5, which are the coefficient being estimated. We have 2.9, we have minus 1.9, we have 0.5. So those those are the are similar to those used uh, in the simulation. So now they say we should generate a response vector y according to the model, according to this uh, model, and perform the best subset selection and 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 the lasso discuss the results obtained. So here we have we have these terms, okay? So we have to use summary. They use summary rec subsets where we have y tilde poly x at uh, ten. So raw true and data is that. Uh, then we got uh, uh, we got uh, this as our results. So we now use a new function cv dot net poly that equals that dollars and x. Then we have ten because we have 10 predictor and then raw is true, then that's dollars and Y for the data set, then alpha is equals to one. So we select the best. So here we can see that we have 1.12, 1 1.12. Then when we did a plot, uh, we still have a similar results. But here, the mean squared error ranges from zero to around, to around 4,000. So when we now check for the results for the prediction that we got from that, so when we now run prediction on the outputs, so we can see uh, the estimate it goes from minus 0 0.88 to 0 0.18. So when fitting the lasso, the model does not perfectly replicate the simulation. Okay, coefficient are retained for powers of x that we are not uh, that we are not simulated. So so the next question, which is uh, question nine from the from the lab. So they say in this exercise, we will predict the number of applications received using the other variables in the college data sets. A, split the data set into a training set and a test set. Okay. So here they were using base R to entirely model. We are going to use uh, the initial split function. So we use, we set a random set. Okay, we have sample, which is number of row from the college. Then we have number of row of college times two all over three. We, this is going to give us the training sets. Then this give, will give us uh, the test sets. This will give us the test set in the model. Then here we have mean square error, which is just a list, which is an empty list in which uh, they created. Then we have to use the fit a linear model using the least square on the training set and report the test error of 10. So we have to fit LM, which is the apps, which is the response explained by everything. Then data is goes to what college. So this shows that we are fitting this model on the training set, okay? Then we have mean square error of the LM, which is mean, predict, fit, college on the test, minus college, dollars and apps, test all over, all square, so we can see that the mean square error is uh, is this value. So here they say they fit a rich regression model on the training sets with lambda with lambda chosen by cross validation reports the test error obtained. So when we use this, we have we are using model dot matrix. Okay, we have apps explained by everything. Then data is equals to college. Then here we have training sets. We have CV dot climates. We have MM. Then we have college dollars and apps on the training data set. Then we have alpha is equals to zero. Then we, we need to do our run predictions on the fits. Then we use model dot matrix. Okay, on the test sets. Then S is fit lambda dot minimum. So here we can see that the test set main square is giving us uh is giving us two a is giving us this. Okay, so now they now say we should fit a lasso model on the training sets with lambda chosen by cross validation 
we should report the test error of them along with the number of non-zero coefficient estimates. So here we have the model, okay? The model was fit on the training data sets. So we we use cv.climnet, okay, on the training. Then we, this line is just for us to, we should predict on the fit. Then this is gonna retrieve the mean square error for the lasso. We can see that the mean square error is giving us uh, this, and this mean square error for the test sets. So then I'll say we should fit a principal component or regression model on the training set with M chosen by cross validation. We should report a test error of 10 along with the value of M selected by cross validation. So here we have PCR function, which is principal component regression. So we have apps explained by everything. Then data is equals to college. Then here we are fitting it on the training data set. We scale the data that is put scale to true. Then validation is cross validation. Then validation plots, we pass in our feed for validation type is MSEP, which is going to give us this value where we are going to have number of components which move from zero to around 16. Then MSEP will not be uh, the, the response uh, value. I, so here we have, we now have to predict, we now have to run predict on fit four for the test sets. The number of components is equals to 17. So we now extract the mean square error for the principal components uh, regression. So we can see that the mean square, uh, the mean square error uh, is giving us uh, is giving us this value. Then I'll say we should fit a principal partial least square model on the training sets with M chosen by cross validation. Then we will have to report the test error of them along with the with the value of M selected by cross validation. So here they were using partial least square regression function. They have the response explained by every other thing, everything. Data is college, so they are fitting it on a training data set, scale to true, then validation to CV, which is cross validation. Then we have to use the validation plots by calling the fit five, type is MSEP, which is gonna give us uh, the similar plot as we got before. So we now run our predict. Fits, college is test. Here they are using the number of components. They make use of 12 co uh, component, principal component. So they extract the mean square error of the partial least square. So we can see uh, that the mean square error is giving us uh, this value. So the now say we should comment on the result of 10. How accurately can we predict the number of college applicants application received? Is there much difference among the test error resulting from the five approaches? Okay. So here we are, they make use of these bar plots. We have to unlist the mean square error, then Y lab is test mean square error horizontal to be true. So put the bar plot of this set it up horizontally. So here we can see that the rich and lasso give the lowest test errors, or the lowest is generated by the rich uh, regression model. In this specific case, with with specific uh, seed. Hey, so, uh, like, on, on that answer there, I was a bit confused because it looks like Rich has the highest error. Yes, uh, yes. I think uh, maybe, I think yes. In the notes, there is an error in the note because looking at it, Rich has the highest error. Why the least error from what me I can see, the least error is gonna be for PLS. 
Yeah, I, I wonder if the if the author just got it mixed up between lowest and highest, because Rage and Lasso yes. have the highest, at least by this this uh, graph. Yes, for me, Lich, which regression has the highest error. But looking at the notes, uh, the author says uh, uh, this one has the least. Or maybe there was a typo when they were creating. To me, to me, yeah, to me, I agree with you. Which has the highest error? Then the list is for PLS followed by PCR, principal component, uh, principal component uh, regression. Maybe it's something we need to like uh, create a pull request to update that in the. Okay, question 10. We have seen that as the number of futures used in a model increases, the training error will ne necessarily decrease, but the test error may not. We will, we will now explore this in a simulated uh, data set. So they say we should generate a data set with P that has 20 predictors, futures is 1,000, that is number of observation is 1,000 observations and an associated quantitative response vector generated according to the model. Y is equals to X beta plus E, where beta has some elements that are exactly equal to zero. So here we set it in our random seed. We, we create our matrix, which is R norm, 1,000 times 20. Number of row is 1,000, okay? Then we extract the column names, all names of that. Then we paste, use the paste zero function where we have B. We repeat B. That is a sequence for one of one to 20. Then we have beta, which is repeat zero 20 times. We now have beta that ranges. We subset the first four rows and replace it with five, four, two and seven. Then we have Y, where we have called sums of T, transpose of that times beta plus R norm of 1000. So we now have data dot frame, we create a data frame of this that in which we created initially, we convert it, we convert it to a data frame. Then we have that dollar sign Y, okay, which will be Y. So question two, now they now say we should split it, your data set, our data set into training sets containing 100 observation and a test set containing 900 observation. So we create a training set using this uh, formula. Then we also create a test set using this approach. So we now perform the best subset selection and the training set and plot the training set mean square error associated with the best model of each size. So how do we go about that? We now use the red subset again. Y explained by everything. Data is equals to train. MV max is equals to 20 because we want to use a total of uh, 20 predictors. So that is why we introduce this. Okay. Then we get the summary of the fit, which gives us uh, this uh, output. So we now plot summary of fit dollars and RSS because we want to the residual sum of square divided by 100. Then Y lab is mean square error. That is equals to zero. So we got this. So we can see that these are the index, which goes uh, from maybe one to around 20 because we have how many predictors? We had 20 uh, predictors. So we can see the mean square. We can see the mean square error in the y-axis. So we now plot the test set mean square error associated with the best model of each size. So here we are using a function. We are using that has uh, three uh, these arguments. So we have as the formula object dollar sign call of two. So model dot matrix where we have form and the, the new data. So we extract all the coefficients. We extract the names of the uh, the coefficient that we define. So we then we now use 
the S apply function. So wait, for the first 20, uh, one to 20, then function is I, which is mean of test of Y. Then we run a predict on the fit on the test set of I all squared. So we now plot the mean, we now plot the mean square error. So we can see uh, the index, which we, I can say is the predictors, which goes from one to 20. We also got uh, the mean square error, which is similar to what we have for the mean square error when we run this for the death set. So for which year, they say for which model size does the death set mean square error takes on its minimum value? Comment on your results. If it takes on its minimum value for a model containing only an intercept or a model containing all of the futures, then play around with the way that you are generating the data in A until you come up with a scenario in which the test set mean square error is minimized for an intermediate model size. So here we have which dot minimum mean square error here we can see that it is four, which says that the minimum test mean square error is found when model size is four. This corresponds to the simulated data, which has four non-zero coefficients. So here we, we create a random seed. We use a mod matrix, which is R norm, 100 multiplied by 20. Then we have R norm, number of rows is 1,000. We extract the column names, okay? Then we create an object better, which is we are repeating zero 20 times. So we extract the first nine rows and replace it by this by this value. So we, we, we create a new object called Y, which is called sums of the transport of that multiplied by beta plus R naught 1000. So we create a data frame. So we, ex we are, we name our object Y, then we, we get the training sets. We also get the test sets. So we use the red subset to fit the model on the, on, and we, the model was fit on the 20, using 20 predictors, we get the summary. We get the summary of the fit, which is what we got. Then we now, we now create a, uh, our function. Then at the end, we plot our mean square error of the fit, which is still going to give us this uh, output. So here we use which dot minimum. So here we see we, we now have five, which is uh, which is different from what we had initially, which was uh, four. So here they say, how does the model at which the test set mean square error is minimized compared to the true model used to generate the data comments on the coefficient uh, values. So here we say that the minimum test, test mean square error is found when the model size is five, but there are nine zero coefficients. So we have coefficient of fit, ID is equals to five. So we have B1, B2, B3, B4, B5. So we can see ID because here we specify the ID should be five. So here we see that the coefficient value are well estimated when R, but the smaller coefficient are the smaller coefficients are dropped uh, from. So the next question they say we should create a plot displaying for a range of values of R where beta j of R is the j coefficient estimate for the best model containing R coefficients. Comments on what you observe. How does this compare to the test mean square error plot from D? So here we have, we get the names, okay? We get the value of B, which is data dot frame of ID of the names, and also B is equals to beta. So we get the outputs We're using the S apply on one to 20 function I. Then we, we extract the coefficient and also we get the square root. So when we plot the mean squared coefficient of the error, so we get the mean square coefficient of error for the 20th, 20th predictors. So we can see from here, 
uh, it was around, uh, it moved from 0 0.46, you move up to 0 0.50, you can see it went up, then the, uh, the mean squared coefficient of the error, it dropped, okay? Then it begins, before it begins uh, to rise again. Here when I say that the error of the coefficient estimate is minimized when the model size is five, okay? That is when the model size is five. This corresponds to the point when the test mean square error was minimized. Okay, so the last uh, the last part talk about question, which is question 11, is say, we will now try to predict per capita crime rate in the Boston data sets. So they say we should try out some of the regression methods explored in this chapter, such as the best subset selection, the lasso, the rich regression, the principal component regression, present and discuss results for the approaches that you consider. So we set a random seed, we create an object for the training, we place the test sets, then we just plot uh, the histogram uh, for the crime. So we, we can look at the distribution. So, so here they say they propose a model that seems to perform well on this data set and justify your answer. Make sure that you are evaluating model performance using validation set error, cross validation, or some other reasonable alternative as opposed to using training error. So here we will try to fit models to log Boston, dollar sign crime, which is clear to a normal distribution. So we fit the linear model on the training data sets. So we did we do our prediction on the test set. So we can see that the main prediction is this. So uh, we also fit another model for the climb on the training data sets. We use uh, the climb net approach. Uh, we, we run uh, predictions. So we, we look at the main uh, uh, for, the, for the test sets, main error for the test, which is 0 0.65. So we also do the same thing. We fit the same model by log transforming the, the response. So if we use cv.climnet function on these objects, so where we have log, boost on, dollars and crime on the training data set where alpha is one, then we predict we do our prediction on the test sets, then we now get extract the main prediction, which is uh, we got 0 0.64. So here we just uh, run uh, our validation plots on feed four, which we defined using the principal component uh, regression. So we just got the number here, number of component, MSEP, so here we have a component from zero to around 12. So we now, we now predict on the, by specifying that we want to run prediction for the, the number of components. When the number of components is eight, we extract the mean, which is uh, 0 0.65 also. Uh, yeah, we did this, they did the same thing uh, here, using the PLSR function. On, by placing the crime on a log transform scale data. They are using here is the training data with the scale it validation with CV. Then we have the validation plots, fit five, validation type MSEP. So when we plot, we still have this, we still have uh, this um, similar plot. So here, the, the wrong prediction on using six components, number of principal components is equals to six. So we have to, to have the mean prediction, so which is 0 0.67. So we can see that in this case, lasso seems to perform very slightly better than unpenalized regression. Some coefficients have been, some coefficients have been what dropped. So when we, you look at the coefficient of fit three, S is fit three, Lambda dot minimum. So we can see the coefficients uh, in which 
we we get go from the model where we have these are the intercept, which is minus this, then these are other coefficients which we're able to get uh, from the model. And here they were asking that does your choosing model involve all of the futures in the data set? Why or why not? Not all futures are included due to lasso uh, penalization. That is why some futures uh, will be dropped. So I think uh, that is that is all I was able to get from the chapter. I don't know if anybody have a comment or any further contribution. No, I'm good. Thank you. Okay.